Parole su fua, ma lange mama. Kia ora everyone, um, I'm Damon Salesa and I just wanted to acknowledge and thank my panel colleagues and the many of you who are listening and watching. Um, I'm here in uh, Auckland, New Zealand, right by the ocean actually and in the shade of uh, Mangarei in the rohi of Ngāti Whātua, so I acknowledge the mana whenua here um, and thank all the people who have made this possible and the series of wonderful talks that have happened. Um, of course, I changed my mind about what I wanted to speak about, which um, partly uh, just from listening to, to my fellow panelists, I guess, um, and sorry, Miley, I, I've changed also my profile. So I thought I was coming here as a scholar, um, but I also have another role at the university, which has overtaken my scholarly role in many ways, that I'm the pro vice chancellor of Pacific, the only one in the world, essentially a vice president of the university. And I thought given the, the, the questions and the topics are around pedagogy in the diaspora, that uh, this is a, a useful contribution I might be able to make to this conversation. Um, partly because as one of the university executives, <clears throat> I've had to be part of our response to COVID. And I think we've learned much about um, what we can do, what we can't do, <laughs> um, but also some of the opportunities that that lie in this moment to improve pedagogy, teaching curriculum, not just in a classroom setting, but in a system setting. And so I wanted probably to speak to some of that. Now, of course, in New Zealand, we're in a different space. I'm at a very large university. So the University of Auckland is New Zealand's largest by a long way, nearly twice the size of the others. We have 4,000, just under 4,000 Pacific students at the university. Um, this means that you know, it's core business to the university as it's come to realize through the advocacy of myself and others that Pacific students not achieving, not re-enrolling, not feeling welcome is not just a problem for Pacific students when it's at that scale, it's a problem for the entire university. And it's actually a problem for our nation and our community. So politically, funding wise, um, and in terms of will, the University of Auckland has many advantages over many of our institutions elsewhere. Um, but it also means it has disadvantages. Our things have to work at scale. They have to work um, and they have to produce results that transform the lives of our communities and, and so on. And so we have, over the course of the last 30 years, had many, many programs that are devoted to improving Pacific achievement, making sure students are welcome, um, trying to address some of the things about us, as uh, Fee Nelsina was saying, that it make studying at a university um, difficult or even impossible for many of our students. And some of these, and perhaps the most obvious place of our failing is our inability to generate, to recruit, to support, to grow Pacific staff. So we're a, we're a city, we're 20% of our population uh, from the Pacific Islands outside of New Zealand. Um, another you know, close to 20% are Māori, and that means that we're a place which is profoundly Pacific, and yet our staff don't look like that. So what, we're, what we need to be doing is really addressing that quite sharply. Um, and I'm hopeful that, that we'll get there um, and sooner rather than later. Um, we need staff that look like our students, so the university looks like our students. And so without trying, just by getting up um, in the morning, the university is a Pacific place. That's the kind of dream um, for me and my colleagues. I think that is a, the, the kind of possibility around that um, is that you know, we're in a, a moment where many of the core assumptions of university education and its relationship with school education have had to be questioned. And I wanted to talk a little about that. Um, yeah, we're at, a, at the university, we're in a, a key moment because we've got a new vice chancellor, our university president, and we've just developed a new strategic plan and the strategic plan has Pacific as one of its core, um, core drivers, one of its strategic objectives, um, both in research and in teaching and education, and also in changing the composition of our staff. And these are big things to accomplish at big, nasty places like universities. But we know, although universities are big and nasty, they're also big and beautiful. And I think, um, that's, that's been a really critical part of my understanding about possibility in this. You know, I think 10 years ago, I didn't even care about our university strategic plan. 
Now I'm one of the faces of our strategic plan. And actually what excites me most is that the university is committed to something alongside our strategic plan, which we're calling the Waipapa framework, which is an indigenous framework that rather than taking a five year um, strategic plan length of time, is actually taking a 50 year length of time. And so the Waipapa framework, which we'll complete later on this year, I think we'll, everyone here would recognize its kind of vision. It involves actually renaming the university. So the university's indigenous name will go from Te Whariwanang or um, Tamaki Makoto to Waipapa Taumatarau, the Waipapa of a hundred mountains. Um, and um, that means why we, we have a Waipapa framework, which is which are the mountains we wish to climb in 50 years. And yeah, at the center of that is a revitalization of Te Reo Māori, the local um, indigenous language, and actually, it called the question for many of us, and it will call the question about what is the place of Pacific people um, in a context where we're trying to address um, the, the many, many um, challenges that colonialism and our history has and visited it on, on local Indigenous people. So yeah, we, we know Pacific people are suffering here in Auckland, but we also know that we have our places elsewhere but also this is our place, but it's someone else's place. And what does that mean? What does our, our practicing of our whanaungatanga, our, our relationships mean when budgets come? Yeah. <laughs> Who has the first go at the budget? We have to speak, um, we have to conduct ourselves in a way that, that has symmetry between the values we profess and the values we enact when we're sitting with our Māori brothers and sisters at the... <laughs> Um, budget tables and that can be quite difficult on the face of it because I think that that puts us into a position where we must endorse um, te tiriti o waitangi, the, the indigenous struggle for uh, recognition and proper fulfillment of the Treaty of Waitangi um, as well as staying true to who we are and our journey as a, an indigenous people from another place who came here on flying and ocean going canoes um, and so I think that's a really critical question. And, and the answer for me is quite simple, which is that um, we have yet to see a place where Māori thrive and Pacific people don't. So if Māori are thriving, I have complete confidence that Pacific people will thrive too. Um, just because I only have um, a couple of minutes left, I did want to point out some very specific things that happened under COVID. Now we know that COVID actually amplified the deep inequalities that people were already experiencing. Um, it just made them worse. We saw some things that have long been in the critical list for me, um, and I know that in the US it's happened as well, that one of the, the core effects of, of COVID was to push young men out of education, especially young men of color and indigenous young men into the workforce. So already two thirds of our Pacific students on campus are women. Um, young Pacific men are increasingly missing. They're going into low paid work straight after school. Um, so that's true. Young women, of course, have a different problem that they're pushed into unpaid labor in their extended family situations. And often they have a lot strong academic achievement, but are not able to access um, education because of labor they're doing for their families. Um, so what have we been doing, I guess, is the question. Well, one of them was that the digital presented a new way of conceiving of a university. So we actually have had all staff Zooms we're, we have 5,000 staff at the University of Auckland. So 5,000 staff have been on Zoom. <laughs> and they've actually asked for different ways of communicating. They're in webinars, but they actually want to hear their leaders talk about these things. And so it's presented a new line of accountability. Most of our staff care about this. They care about, they believe in the mission of the university. They believe in social justice. Um, you know, and, and so I think what we have empowered, we've unlocked young staff, which are far more diverse than old staff, <laughs> we've unlocked their ability to speak to their leaders. And, and that's opened up a new line of, of expectation and accountability. I think for me, there's a lot in the digital space that, that is filled with risks. So one of the first things we rolled out, we actually had a staff member when we went into lockdown who had a thousand laptops in her garage and she was couriering them out, um, shipping them out to Pacific and Māori students who didn't have laptops 
with Wi-Fi dongles. Because how can you be digital when you don't have, you're trying to write an essay on your device? You know, we reminded people about good practice, that if you're living, if there's 15 people living in a three bedroom room, you're going to have your mic and your camera, a three bedroom home, you're going to have your mic and your camera off. Um, those sorts of things. And that meant that we positioned ourselves as looking forward in the digital world. And so we were able to secure new resources. And I'll just talk about two of them in 30 seconds. One of them is that we produced Kahu, which is a digital assistant. Now, all of these, we have Māori and Pacific staff in the design, in the co-design. Um, Kahu is the sign, the symbol of Ngāti Whātua, the mana whenua here. That brings together our learning management system, events, um, social support, everything for a student and runs a calendar. <laughs> Basically, can we deliver, can we support students with the learning skills digitally that they don't have, that we just assume in our students? Um, a second one was, and I was gonna share this, but I won't, but I can send the link. We redesigned the front face of the university that students see online to something called Your World, Your Way. Um, our students clicking through that, it actually is bilingual, so it's in Māori and English. They can pick all the, they answer a few questions and it customises them. So a Pacific student will open up onto a kind of, if you think of animal crossings, looks like animal crossings, um, and it has a kind of iconic buildings on campus, but a Pacific student will see a Pacific university um, when they click through it, including our beautiful Whale Pacifica at the centre of it. And you will be able to experience a online poor feeding. So you'll be formally welcomed as you step through by a traditional Māori welcome, which we created a digital version of. And I guess the last one, and I will leave it after this, is that we are also in this most secured funding to run what we're calling ako kakato, which is the Nguyen phrase for holistic learning. And so in my team, I'm actually onboarding um, up to three social workers who will be able to make home visits and support our students. Now, we understand that this is the first time anyone's ever tried this. There's a lot of risk in this if you don't have trained people, um, but we're partnered with a Pacific health provider. They'll be able to, in different languages, engage with students, deliver, um, there's a structure to deliver housing, social support, as well as actually support them into the university's systems. So, yeah, I think this is a moment that's incredibly dangerous for our our communities, but has the possibility that it's freed up some room to innovate by showing just how flawed some of the earlier ways of doing things were. So I'll leave it there. Fafte level.